Over the years, Minecraft's evolution has been one magical thing. Whether it's the cool new updates they add, the community mods that people create, or the different iterations they add for certain consoles. I can say for sure that Minecraft's Xbox 360 edition is one of the most iconic versions of Minecraft. So I decided to revisit it for 100 days. I wanted to find out if it was truly as good as it used to be. And to make things even more interesting, I decided to try to get every single achievement. With that being said, why don't you sit back and relax and watch these 100 days of nostalgia. So on day one, we go immediately for the bonus chest, which has some great stuff to start out our world with. And then we start working on our first achievement. I mined the whole tree with my fist and I didn't get the collect wood achievement. So I did a couple more to test it out and it did the same thing. So I reloaded the server and thought that would fix it. And it did as I get my first achievement, taking inventory. So I basically did the first couple minutes again. I got the collect wood achievement. Same with the benchmarking achievement. And since I could craft my tools now, I got the time to mine and the time to strike achievements as well. It also gave me two other achievements, but it didn't state them. It's probably more tools and then uh, uh, something with a hoe, I'm not sure. But I went on to getting some stone and some coal, and I decided to fight this drown for the monster hunter achievement. I had gotten that stone to get the hot topic achievement, and then used charcoal to smelt wood, get renewable energy. And then I got a bed and changed the sheets to get the achievement change of sheets. I know it seems like we're blowing through this, but there's just so many achievements you can get early game as I get the getting an upgrade achievement. I promise it'll definitely slow down and we'll do a bunch of other stuff. But that's the end of day one, and we go to sleep in our new orange bed. Day two starts off with another achievement, cow tipper, that I forgot to re-get after the first couple minutes. Before I set out into my world, I decide to get a bunch of meat. And I will be spending days two and three discovering the whole entire map because in Xbox 360 edition Minecraft, you only get one section of world. There's no, there's a world border, essentially. That's all I can work with. I will go into further detail on this, but some of the achievements are unobtainable because of the world size. Now I will skip most of this because it's pretty boring, but you can see the map fill up on the left hand side of the screen so that's pretty cool and you might be able to notice that i'm not eating anything that's so i can get the iron belly achievement because i already got rotten flesh from that drowned i figured i'd do it as early as possible you know just to get out the way i also pick up some sugar can on the way because this is going to help us out a lot in the end game you'll see later and on our stop by through the desert i also got some cactus for an achievement that's going to be coming later as well as you can see we got about half the map filled up but i think that's where we end day two and take a little rest day three is a little more exciting than day two just because we get some achievements done and we find something that'll help us a lot and you guess what it is okay yeah we found a village but we're not going to be going to it yet we're going to wait a little bit we're going to explore the rest of the map and then come back to it and we finally got hungry enough to eat our rod flesh and get the iron belly achievement and right after i ate a pork chop and got an achievement too i forgot that was achievement i also got a shirt um i won't ever use that but that's that's cool i guess by the end of day three we didn't fill out the whole map but that was okay, because we can do it tomorrow. On day four, we automatically started filling out the rest of the map. Now that that's done, we can finally head over to that village. And while we head over there, let's explain why my world sucks. At face value, my world seems fine, but there are a lot of biomes missing that I need to complete some of these achievements. All of the achievements that I can't complete are as follows. Adventuring time, lion tamer, dry spell, the deep end, cheating death, so I got that going for me, let it go, feeling ill, one pickle, two pickle, C pickle, four, alternative fuel, musk ramen, castaway, Way, sleep with the fishes and echolocation that's 14 achievements i cannot complete because of the world that i have now that we got that out the way let's get on to our next achievement map room once we got to the village we started clearing out some land and set all of our stuff down i looked around the village and found all three of the crops that we need and i farmed and replanted everything i could find and then i slept chopping trees was the start to my day five i decided i wanted to build a house and i tamed this horse to get the saddle up achievement Back to the house, I started clearing out some land and got to building. But the sun started to set, so I decided to go to bed. When I woke up, I immediately started on my house. I eventually got bored, so I went ahead and built my mine, just because I knew I was going to need it pretty soon. I went as far as my pickaxe would let me, and it happened to be nighttime when I go back up, so I just went to bed. In the morning of day 7, I killed some of the mobs that were burning outside my house so I can get some bones. I made some more tools and then went back down to the mine. I knew I wasn't going to care about my house at all, but at least I found some iron. I was going for negative Y level 11 because that's where diamonds spawned, but in this version of the Xbox 360, that wasn't a thing yet. So I did what any Minecraft player would do, build a little room and then dig tunnels from it. I also built a second story just in case I needed some more tunnels, and I saved myself a lot of time by actually making stairs. I'm going to run up 
up and down these a lot in this video. Once I got to the top, it was nighttime, so I went to bed after this creeper put a hole in the ground. I was in the mine for quite a while, so this marks the start of day nine. I had smelted all the ores that I got the night before and cooked some food as well. All that time in the mines was me just stalling because I had to do something I hate the most. It's not that I don't like building, it's just sometimes time consuming and I can't make up my mind on exactly what I want to do and collecting some of the materials can be a pain. When I got back, I got my next achievement, acquire hardware, and I immediately went to my crafting table to make some iron armor. I really needed the upgrade. I guess the Iron Man achievement's pretty cool too. It ain't much, but it's honest work. This house has taken quite some time, but it's looking pretty nice so far, and I got to sleep in it for the first time. Kind of stood here for a while on day 10. Not sure what I was doing or what I was thinking. Sooner or later, we got to work on the house, and we finally got the base done. Let's go. Leave your guesses down below if I finish this house or not in the next 90 days. Just, just for fun. There are those cobblestone stairs again. I guess the game had to scare me before giving me some diamonds. I'm not sure if these eight diamonds and that achievement were worth my sanity, but we got them anyways. I'm just trying to sleep, man, and I'm getting bullied in my own house. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Probably should torch that up a little bit, huh? You already know we had to make our diamond pick before we go to sleep. It's day 11, and this dude's still here. Nope, not rebuilding that house. I wasn't down in the mines for long. Find some iron, but that's about it. And these guys attack me. And I guess I found some gold too. My notes said I wasn't in there for that long. Now I don't know if another day passed or not. So we're just going to stay on day 11. Found out there's a lot of cartographers here. Which is why I got that sugar cane. But instead of planning it, I went to bed. I, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, that's what I'm doing. I know I'm not that dumb. Since I'm going to need to trade quite a bit, I decided to lock this guy in a box and go find a farmer villager, which I didn't know I had. Now that I'll have a steady source of income, I planted what I could and then I traded what I couldn't plant. I, I traded the leftover stuff that I had. And I put this other guy in a box too. I collected all that iron I mined and made some essentials like the bucket and some shears. I needed shears in order to do this achievement that I need a single wool block of every color. In my world, every single color is craftable except black, brown, gray, and light gray. So I need to find those sheep naturally. But I got kind of late, so I went to bed. Next morning, I finished collecting the dyes and went out to find the sheep. Kind of cheated to get black though. Just It was already there, so I just grabbed it. Oh, I thought this was supposed to be a kid's game. Why are they doing this right in front of me? What the heck? Thanks for the achievement though. And while taking off this purple sheep's clothes, I got another achievement. While I went around shearing all these different colors of sheep, I ended up finding one of the ones that I can't make. The brown sheep. It started to get dark, so I had to go to bed and continue on the next day. Before I set out on day 16, I placed all of my wool in rainbow order, or as best as I could. Before I headed out, I went and bred myself a little dog. And after quite literally searching for the whole day, I finally found the gray sheep. On my way home, I stopped by the lava pool to get some obsidian so I can make my nether portal and my enchantment table. I decided to finish my wool rainbow and then head to bed. The next day, I immediately went to go craft my enchantment table, but this creeper wanted to give me a surprise. I don't know what I would do if my brain wasn't so big. I finally got to craft it and got the enchanter achievement. I didn't want my nether portal to just be standing somewhere, so I built it into this hill. I also crafted a fishing rod so I can get some fish, so I can cook it to get that other achievement. Wait, that's the wrong one. This achievement right here. And then I did this other food achievement. I must have been a little hungry that day. And I got this bucket of lava thinking that was some achievement. Now I realize today was kind of full of chores. I'm just doing some crop stuff now. Everything has to do with food. You already know I had to make some profits off that though. And then it was bedtime. Day 18, I started with some sugar cane farming, because who doesn't love that? It was all good though, I needed it for some bookshelves anyways. And this is where the enchantment table's gonna be. I'm sure being out in the open isn't gonna be a problem at all. And then I decided to go to the nether when I'm completely undergeared. A gas started attacking me right as I got into the nether, but I hit its ball back at him and got the achievement. I looked around for a little while and couldn't find anything, so I tried to go back, but I got smoked. I immediately went back to get my stuff and went to bed when I got home. Start of day 19, I placed the sign to get the It's a Sign achievement. I tamed this dog, made some bookshelves, and got the food that I cooked. 
And I guess I had to poop or something because I was standing here for the whole day. And I did some sugarcane things before I started farming some spiders. While I was doing that, I got unlucky enough to fall into a small hole that led into a ravine. So I died. I just decided to sleep it off. I'll get my stuff in the morning. So it turns out this hole was just a single block. I couldn't see much, so I just kind of went for it. In the end, I survived and I got all my stuff. I used that string I got to make a bow and then the bow that I made to make a dispenser. I then farmed everything so I could trade it with the villager. And then I fell asleep in my empty house again. On day 21, we go to the nether. I hate this place like, with a passion. Oh, look, my pants. And we out and we out. I literally have no words for that. I knew that lava bucket was going to be useful. At this point, I'm so undergeared. I need that full enchantment table and some diamond armor. That's that's why I'm killing cows and you did not watch me hit my dog just now. I, that was not me. I don't know how that happened. Looking back on this, I didn't know that I had llamas in my world. So the achievement, so I got that going for me, was obtainable. I just didn't do it because I didn't know. So if y'all want to get at me in the comments for that, I'd go for it. So I finally obtained my fifth wolf to get that achievement. And I marked this off as day 22. So this is day 22. As I was out, I was going on the sides of the worlds where the water was so I could get some clay for that achievement. And then I found this small village. And lucky enough, this village had two very important villagers in it. One was a toolsmith and the other was a weaponsmith. But apparently I don't see the weaponsmith yet. I find it when I come back. And as I'm heading back home, I find all of these villagers in this one house. And before going to bed, I made some more bookshelves for my enchantment table. On day 23, I made a pot. Why this is an achievement, I don't know. But I'm only a couple books short of getting level 30. I also placed this chest next to the mine for the cobblestone achievement, and I killed a few more cows. I picked up some of my emeralds and took them to the other village. Found out this guy had a fortune one and breaking two pickaxe, what? And that's when I found this other guy. Put him in a hole and found out he was a weaponsmith, which that means I can get diamond swords and axes. On day 24, a zombie started attacking me while I was AFK. I really should put some windows on this thing. I made some more bookshelves and checked the level. I was only one bookshelf off. I trapped this cleric in and started trading with him because I know that's how I'm gonna get my inner pearls. I did a little crop run and made some money as well as the haggler achievement. Those emeralds I just got went straight to the diamond pickaxe. Then I traded with bro over here and he gave me a diamond sword and a diamond ax. I tried to sleep, but then, oh, there's a creeper in my house. A creeper in my house. No. Surely they're gone, right? Oh no. Then instead of going to bed or trying to pick up all my stuff that just fell out of the chest, I tried to go for the sniper duel achievement and it doesn't work at all. And then the creepers decided they haven't greeted me enough tonight. I'm just not going to edit this because I don't want to relive the pain that I went through. Hmm, my notes for day 25 say I went strip mining and got swanton bond by a creeper. What is that? Oh, that's, that's what it means. If you notice when I died, there was quite a bit of lava around, and can you guess where my diamond pickaxe went? I think my inventory speaks for itself. After that incident, I decided to take some time away from the mine and get some more emeralds so I can replace my pickaxe, and I decided to finally move everything into my house. Well, not everything, just my furnaces. I don't know. I, I think I'm an idiot, that's why. But I finally got 30 levels on my enchants and made an anvil. I then proceeded to make one of the dumbest financial decisions you can in Minecraft and use a diamond for a jukebox. It might not be as dumb as going back into the mines because I'm going to need a jukebox later. I don't know if I need to go back down here. You know, I'm mining a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And then I find some diamonds, but I remember not to mine them because I don't have a fortune pickaxe on me. Well, I had enough of the mines today, so I headed out. Day 26, I started with the farm. I just hate spending all that time on farming, but the profits are pretty good. It took me all day, but I got enough emeralds to come back and get another pickaxe. And I even got enough for one of the swords. You'll never guess what I did on day 27. At least there were diamonds involved, and I got seven of them, so that's good too. And I made my first piece of diamond armor with those diamonds. I was pretty proud of myself because I don't think I ever made diamond armor when I was younger. I farmed the sugar cane again and decided it needed to be bigger. So I made it bigger. Wonder how many times I walk up and down the stairs in this video. Chetching, more diamonds. I'm really skipping a lot of this, but I am finding a bunch of coal and iron, which is really good. Can't skip the diamonds though. Ooh. Wee. Die. Finally made full diamond armor. Let's go. This was literally my dream as a kid. I swear. I didn't want to wear it just yet. I wanted some enchantments on it at least. I 
I end up planting my melons and my pumpkins. I never use these, by the way, disclaimer. And then now look at all of this sugar cane. We can sell this for so much now. Okay, I might have lied. I only got seven emeralds, but that's seven more than I had before, so I'm not complaining. I haven't done this in a while, but I get to go to bed for once. Day 28 was all about that nether progression, so I made some more iron armor and headed to the nether. To my surprise, I didn't get immediately attacked by anything this time. I did mine a fair bit of quartz for that sweet XP. While roaming around, I did find what I was looking for. Another fortress. And not too soon after, I found what I was looking for in the nether fortress, the blaze spawner. And after one of them dropped their rod, I got the into fire achievement. I farmed enough of them until I had enough rods, and then I explored more of the fortress. That wasn't a good idea with just iron armor and tools, because I got cornered really quickly and died with 29 levels. I went back and got my stuff, but I dipped immediately. When I got home, I didn't even bother to do anything. I just wanted to sleep. 829 starts out with me making some fire resistance potions. And now that we have our blaze rods, we can start working on getting our eyes of ender. And we'll get our ender pearls from our cleric. And I swam in lava with a fire resistance effect for another achievement. And then for some reason, I decided to tame a horse, which I'll use once or twice, and I'll probably forget about him. The next achievement we're going for is one of the stupidest achievements ever. But apparently the next clip is me going to sleep, so I'm, I'm a little confused now i guess i must have just stood around the rest of the day but now we're gonna make this pig fly now we're back to farming dude oh it's so annoying i don't know if fortune works on crops in this version but i'm gonna do it anyways in the end it's also worth it 32 emeralds from all that isn't half bad and that means i can go ahead and buy eight ender pearls and now i already almost have all the eyes ender that i need make your money get you awfully tired <sighs> Day 31, I mined. That's it, that's all you're getting. I did a lot of the usual on day 32. I'm sure I could have done this whole entire thing a lot better, but I, I mean, I didn't, so I probably wasted a lot of time. Finally, we have something new. That was a good way to spend two minutes. At least I actually ride my horse this time. What do you know? I came all the way over here just to trade for seven emeralds. I probably should have brought those villagers to the other village by now, but I, that's too, that's too much work. I did meet a big old slime on my way back, so I get some of the balls on my way back. And yes, I forgot my horse. I got the skeleton to shoot this creeper to get a music disc. This witch woke me up on day 33, so I had to kill her. I make a slime block not too soon after, listen to some music, and then take a leap of faith. And then I take an even bigger leap of faith by going into the nether again. Yeah, no. No. Give me out. I need out. So instead of going to the nether, why don't we try to find the end portal? That definitely didn't take all day. I did get some pretty good enchantment books from the library, though. And here's the portal room right next to it. I also only needed two more eyes vendor to complete the portal. On my way back in day 34, I traded some emeralds with the villagers over at the small village. And remember, I left my horse over there, so I went ahead and rode him back to my base. I decided to make some iron blocks and get a pumpkin so I can get the bodyguard achievement, which you complete by making an iron golem. Then I used those four emeralds I traded for to get the last ender pearl so I can make the last eye of ender I need for the end portal frame. Wonder how many times I touch a cobblestone stair this video. I was strip mining on day 35 when I ended up finding an abandoned mine shaft, which was actually really lucky for me. Not only is there a lot more open resources down there, there are also a lot of rails, which I will need for a future achievement. I spent up until day 37 in this mine shaft, mining all the rails, getting all the ores, and opening all the chests that I could find. I even found this cave spider spawner on the very edge of the world as well as a zombie spawner, but I won't go back and use those at all. After I had collected all the ores and the rails down in the mine shaft, I went ahead and headed up back to the surface. When I got back, I put all the cobblestone in my chest, and I was so close to getting the chest full of cobblestone achievement, and then I smelted all of my ores. And when I said I mined a lot of rails, I meant I mined almost four stacks of them, which isn't enough, but it's going to help a lot. And then I kind of stared at the ground for a while before I went to bed. Um, I don't know why I did that. It's probably not very good to stay in a house with no windows and the door open. But yeah, at least I got to wake up on day 38 to some nice fresh iron and gold. At least today I stared at my furnaces instead of the floor. 
and it was daytime, so I couldn't die to any mobs. After that mining sesh, I came out with 16 blocks of iron and 6 blocks of gold, which isn't too bad. The rest of the day, I focused on trade so I get to level 30 so I can finally enchant one of my pieces of armor. I decided to enchant my chest plate and got exactly what I was looking for. Me, 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 me. 839 was a copy and paste of day 38, trading emeralds for that level 30 so I can enchant more armor. I also bought another sword and an axe for some reason. I think I was going for the overkill achievement with the swords, but I don't know what the axe is for. At the time I got home, it was nighttime, so I just went ahead and went to bed. Day 40 was the day I went for the on a rail achievement. To get this achievement, you need to go 500 meters on a rail in one singular direction. And I wasn't sure if a block was counted as one meter or if a block was three meters or four. I don't, I don't know how it actually converted. So once I got finished placing all the rails I had, I decided to ride it and see if I got it. Guess I'll have to try again tomorrow. Or not, because on day 41, I'm hunting cows. Oh, that's right. I still need to dye a whole entire set of leather armor for an achievement as well. I quite literally did this all day, but at least I hit level 30 by the end of it. I made a full set of leather armor and dyed it all white to get another achievement on the start of day 42. And then I got a little unlucky with the enchantment on my pants, but at least they had on breaking three. I then mined a couple pieces of cobblestone to finish the chest full of cobblestone achievement, which is one of the weirdest achievements Minecraft has. Let me know in the comments if you're team carrot or team potato. I think in Minecraft and in real life, potatoes are just better. I wonder if Minecraft villagers were actually based off Squidward, because they kind of make the same noise as him and they have the big old nose. I don't know. Day 43, we bought a lot of pumpkin pie for some reason. I think I was just trying to get my levels up, but why pumpkin pie? I don't know. If I had more time, I would have definitely made some automatic sugarcane farms, but I just don't think it would have been worth it. I only hit level 30 again, so I decided to enchant my boots this time, and I got some pretty nice ones. I normally go for fire protection on at least one piece of my armor, and I normally do it on the boots, but considering that I have it on my pants, this isn't as good as I wanted it to be. Now we can get back onto the, one of the most pointless achievements achievements in Minecraft on a rail. Since four stacks of rails didn't work, I just assumed that it was going to be exactly 500 rails. So that's exactly what I did. At least I thought. I started extending the track just further beyond the point that I ended. And once I was done, I decided to ride the minecart all the way back. Dude, this achievement's actually so dumb. I don't, I don't get it at all. It makes no sense. The next day, I just decided to make two more stacks of rails. I just, I wasn't trying to count exactly how many out. I just knew this was going to be more than enough. As I was going to put the rails on the other end of the track, I saw a witch and realized I could get that achievement right now. But then after I brewed the potion of poison, she was already gone. And so I just had to wait. I then decided to make a weakness potion and get it in a gold apple and keep it on me at all times, just in case that same situation happens with the zombie villager just so I don't miss my chance. And then I put the rest of the two stacks of rails that I had. It took almost all day, but we finally got to see if it actually works this time. Sorry, I had to make y'all sit and watch the whole thing because that just shows how dumb and pointless that achievement was. Speaking of achievements, isn't that a zombie villager right there? I throw the potion at him and feed him the golden apple and he starts attacking me still and almost die. I ended up getting out of harm's way and wait there until I get the achievement. 
Too bad he was just another stupid cleric. When I rode back to my base, it was already day 45. I decided to go for the free diver achievement, and for that, I needed a puffer fish. It took me almost half the day, but I ended up getting it. I brewed my water breathing potions and sat in the water for two minutes. Just another pointless achievement in my opinion, but oh well. Day 46 was just one of those setting up days, kind of figuring a couple things out. I sat here waiting on apples to fall from these trees, but I realized I could just go buy some with some emeralds. I wanted to make the golden apple before the ender dragon fight, but if I couldn't, I would save it for the wither fight because I feel like that would have been a little more challenging and I guess I didn't get enough pumpkin pie the other day so I went and bought some more. Did my daily farming and my sugar cane farming and decided to get some achievements I can only get at night. For instance I killed this creep with a bow and got a baseball cap for some reason and then I got my archer achievement. And I tried the sniper duel achievement again, but I was still convinced that this was not possible because once the skeleton got 50 blocks away from me, I just couldn't see it at all. But I did end up finding a witch to get that taste of your own medicine achievement. At the start of day 47, I hit level 30, which was good because I can enchant another piece of my armor. And I did. But the only problem with the helmet is it didn't have unbreaking three, but that wasn't that big of a deal. And with that, I was finally able to put on my fully enchanted diamond armor set. And it was time to head to the mines to try to find gold so I can finish that golden apple. Okay, I've literally been down here for a day and I found absolutely none. What is going on? I guess I'll smelt the stack of iron I got. I was level 30 again though, so I could enchant my bow. At least I got power, but I was really hoping for infinity so I didn't have to buy arrows. Then I combined both my swords so I get sharpness three and then added looting three on top of that, and then made it sharpness four, just cause. And power four wasn't enough, so I made it a power five bow. Then I stared at this jungle tree for a solid minute. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Since my sword did nine attack damage, I thought I would get the overkill achievement, but it ended up not working, and I don't know if that's because nine attack damage doesn't mean nine hearts. That would mean four and a half. I don't know. I didn't look into it. I didn't research it. So I just thought this achievement was unattainable. I thought it would be a PvP only thing, but after looking into it, destruction obviously. I found you probably have to use strength potions. And then I headed to bed before making the final preparations for the Ender Dragon fight. On the start of day 49, I bought some arrows, got some of the dirt out of my chest, and headed for the end portal. Fast forward a little bit, and it's kind of a little darker, but I did find the end portal eventually. So I threw my two eyes of Ender in there and went into the portal. So as we enter the end, we're just going to call this the start of day 50. Out of all my hundreds of hours on Xbox 360 Minecraft, this would be the first time I ever beat the Ender Dragon. And for some reason, I was just smoking these crystals. Okay, maybe I didn't do as good as I thought I did, but I did make sure to bring my bottles so I can get the dragon spread achievement. After I shot down the last tower, I built up and destroyed the last two ones in the cages. At first I got up real close and was hitting it with my sword, then I realized in this older version of Minecraft, you could shoot the dragon with your bow at any point in the fight. So after a while of doing that, I ended up shooting my last shot and beating the ender dragon. And you already know I collected the dragon egg, cause I mean who doesn't? But before I left, I needed to go into the further end, I don't know what you call it. So I threw the ender pearl in, and I saw the end city. And in overworld time, this would be the start of day 51. Exploring these things can get pretty annoying, and I'm sure you know why, but I will say the loot is definitely worth it, especially in these older versions. And this pickaxe I found was actually insane. It took me about a day going through this whole entire place, killing all the shulkers I could, and finally reaching the end ship. I tried to collect the dragon head, but it just fell into the void. I mean, it's not that big a deal, but it was still pretty cool to have. I then killed the Shulker, looted some pretty good armor out of these chests, and finally claimed my Elytra. One thing I want to note about this version is that you can actually put on your Elytra from your hotbar. You don't have to go in your inventory and switch it out like you do in Java versions. But I used my Elytra for the first time and then headed back to the end. And as I jumped through the portal, I finally got the end achievement. And when I got back, it was time for bed. When I woke up on day 52, I made some more chests and made four shulker boxes, which I was surprised wasn't an achievement as well as getting my elytra, but oh well. And since I had my elytra, I finally had some use for like gunpowder I had been saving. I also used my elytra with rockets for the first time. I then headed to my lava pool so I can get some obsidian so I can make an ender chest because I put some of the loot from the end cities in there. When I made the ender chest, I was able to get my really good pickaxe and my nice pair of boots out of there. I combined all three pairs of my boots to get these really good boots, even though they had curse of vanishing, but I wasn't too worried about them. I also combined all three of my helmets to get this near perfect helmet. All I was missing was aqua affinity. I didn't put fortune on 
on my pickaxe yet because I wanted to make sure it was fortune three. So I just waited. I tested my luck in the mines on day 53. I was still looking for the remaining gold to make the enchanted golden apple for the wither fight. And with my new pickaxe, I sure it would help a lot. And believe it or not, I was able to find gold in the first couple of minutes. Does anybody remember when I spent a day or two in here and didn't find any? After a couple more minutes of mining, I already had enough, but I decided to stay down here and keep looking. And oh boy, that was a waste of time. At least I was able to construct the golden apple, which is only possible in the older versions of Bedrock. Believe it or not, this apple weighs roughly 154,560 kilograms. Steve must be very strong then. To finish off the day, I headed over to the other village to grab some more emeralds. And when I got back, it was already time for bed. At this point, I had all preparations set to fight the weather, except for actually having the skulls. So that's what I did on day 54. I reinforced the portal so I can get back safely when I was done, and then I headed to the fortress. Wither skeletons have a 2.5% chance to drop their skull when they die, and every level of looting you have adds 2% to that. In other words, I have an 8.5% chance to get a wither skeleton skull when they die. So that means for every 12 wither skeletons I kill, I should at least get one head. And if you know old farming Minecraft odds, you would know that this would not take me 36 wither skeletons. If you want to go back and count how many wither skeletons that took, you can be my guest, but I'm not going to do it. I was just happy that I got one of the heads now. And with that, I was able to get the camouflage achievement. I didn't know if this would work because I don't know if you could actually put the wither skeleton heads on. Getting the other two took absolutely no time. I guess it was because of how bad my luck was at the start, but I'm not complaining. When I got back to the overworld, five days had already passed. So this would be the middle of day 59. And then I wasted no time by going down in the mines and building my little arena. And by arena, I mean a small little room to spawn the wither in and a giant tunnel to walk through and i found some diamonds on the way and once my tunnels were finished i placed the last head on the wither and ate my golden apple i thought the wither was going to target me in the tunnel and just keep breaking that layer like it normally does but it started flying up and breaking the ceiling trying to shoot at this thing was actually such a pain because it was hitting me back my controller's kind of boo-boo. Did you know that the Wither is twice as powerful on Bedrock Edition, having 600 HP instead of 300 like on Java? I ended up getting it down to half health, but then here comes the hard part. Can't hit this thing with my bow anymore, so I gotta hit it with my sword. And this thing has been smoking me all night. And apparently it has some special attack that it can do where it just breaks up a bunch of blocks in front of it. We end up coming all the way back to my staircase, and I decided to take one final push and try to get it. Okay, I actually just got smoked, but I run back down and see that there's nothing left. Everything was blown up, so I spent the next literal day going back and forth, coming and punching this thing, and I finally ended up defeating it with my fist. And apparently the one on Bedrock pulls a guilt throw when it dies, so, yeah, I don't know. At least when I went back, the nether star was still there, and that's all I really cared about. And of course, I died again before I could get out of there. Don't worry, because we finally got out of there with the nether star. And since I died with all my stuff, I have to remake all of my armor. But not too soon after, I was able to make my beacon. Kind of annoying this doesn't give an achievement on its own, but... I still need it for another achievement nonetheless. And on top of that, it was a wet beacon. Pat and Jane would definitely disapprove. And I finally got to rest after these very eventful two days. After yesterday's incident, I have a lot to catch up on. So I started with trading for some emeralds so I can get my fortune pickaxe back. And I was quite literally one emerald short. So I took a visit to the green stuff. And then got a couple more emeralds and purchased another. And I was finally able to mine these few diamonds that the wither exposed down here and then i used those to make another pair of boots one thing that wasn't lost in the wither fight was my efficiency four and breaking three pickaxe so i finally got to use it on day 63 and i almost got bodied on my way down by this drowned and iron sword once i got down there i immediately found some gold and there's some diamonds hiding behind it and it was actually one of the biggest veins of diamonds i've ever seen i didn't know this was possible 17 diamonds with fortune one from that whole vein and i found this guy wandering down here so i decided to cure him because why not and as i was leaving to do so i found some diamonds i missed on the roof after i had started the curing process i went back up to sleep i got back up to speed on day 64 by finishing my diamond armor and when i went down to check on my villager it turns out he's another farmer i was really hoping for a librarian because it would have made my day a lot easier but instead i started chopping trees farmed some sugar cane and got a bunch of leather to finish the rest of my enchantment table even though i wasn't level 30 it was still nice to have the enchantment table back and before i ended the day i went to try to get the supersonic achievement where you fly through a one by one block with an elytra and i realized this 
it was going to be very tough. And that's what I decided to do for all of day 65 and 66. I made sure to put all my useful stuff aside just so I didn't have to pick it up every time I died. If I had to pick any achievement that was the dumbest out of this list, this would be the one. I honestly kind of wasted these two days because this isn't how you're really supposed to get it. I mean, it might be, but you literally don't gain enough speed just flying with it. I even made this little platform to dive off of and try to shoot right in the hole and it just doesn't work. I mean, on this attempt on day 66, obviously this isn't going to work, but it is possible to make it in the hole. And like I said, I tried it all day again and just no luck with it at all. Luckily, I ran out of rockets at some point, so I had to stop. Now, if you thought the last two days were pointless, day 67 through 79, I fished for mending for my elytra. In earlier versions, you could repair your elytra with leather, and I tried that, but it didn't work. And so I thought my only other option was to get mending. And so day after day, I fished and got nothing. I got a couple enchanted books here and there that helped me a little bit, but nothing that I was looking for. And then finally it hit me. There's a thing called phantoms in the game. And by this time it was already day 77, so I just farmed them the next couple of days. I ended up getting three, so I was able to repair my elytra almost to full capacity. And then I decided that was enough, so I finally went to bed. Although I wasted 12 days fishing, I did get one really good thing out of that. An efficiency four fortune three book. Having this is going to speed up my next achievement quite a bit. So I made the best pickaxe money could buy and headed down to the mines. One of the harder achievements in Xbox 360 Minecraft is Beaconator. This achievement requires you to fully power a beacon. And if you know how to do that, you know it's not cheap. The only thing that could stop us from getting this achievement is the world border. No, it's, it's actually time. I don't know if I have enough time to do this. And I know it's not very fun watching someone mine for 10 minutes. So here's the brief summary of what we do from day 80 to 88. We smelt. We build. We smelt. We build some more. We farm. We trade. And we farm some more. And our farmer's gone. Good thing we have another one. I bet none of y'all have ever been this rich in Xbox 360 Minecraft. And now we're only four blocks off. And then we got some more coal trading. Only two more blocks now. Quick little nap for the funsies. Even though it happens a lot, finding diamonds never gets old. But mining endless strips definitely does. But now it was officially time to finish the beacon. And of course, to my surprise, the achievement doesn't go through. I guess we gotta build it bigger. This is gonna be a lot more blocks. That extra layer basically doubled what I needed. Still don't know if getting emerald for this beacon was efficient, but I did it anyways. At least I don't have to plant the sugar cane like I do all the other crops. And I've actually seen so much gray in this video, it's hurting my brain a little bit. But I really don't mind it when it's mixed in with blue. 12 year old me would actually be freaking out right now. Did you know, in this version of Minecraft, every chunk has at least one diamond in it. If that Minecraft fact wasn't fascinating enough, did you know that Minecraft Xbox 360 Edition sold over 20 million copies? One final fun fact before we continue. Did you know that a full beacon has 164 blocks of ore on it? Apparently I didn't because I am off by 81 blocks, which is why I'm not getting the beaconator achievement right now. I guess I got so mad I tore the whole beacon down. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I did remake a small one though, just for the speed boost. I think I gave up on it at this point because I turned a bunch of my emerald blocks into emeralds so I can trade for some swords. And as I'm headed home, I try to kill this creeper and this spider hits me instead. So in turn, I miss the creeper and this creeper blows me up. That was such a great way to end off day 88. Even though the beaconator achievement didn't work out, I still had to get well rested for some last minute achievements I had to do. I'll tell you, I didn't realize how lethal creepers were back in the day. From getting swanton bombed for them just spawning in my house, it's actually just crazy. Crazy? I was crazy once. They locked me in a room. A rubber room. A rubber room with rats. Rats made me crazy. Crazy? You know what makes me crazy? The fact that I have to get gas tears for this achievement. Hooray, the nether, yay. Little did these guests know, I play Call of Duty. That wasn't so bad for my first gas tier. Yoink, thank you. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Watch this, watch this. I had to redeem myself after that. That was horrendous. That's gas tier number three. I'm just the best. I want controller, I'm just the best. And there's the fourth and final gas tier. I'm glad I don't have to go back there ever again. And of course, the first thing I do on day 90 is make the ender crystals. The first ender dragon fight seemed pretty easy, so I didn't actually prepare at all. And it was definitely a lot easier to find this time. I still wish they would add a fourth dimension to Minecraft. That'd be pretty cool. If you've never respawned the ender dragon before, all you need to do is place ender crystals on each of the spots that I do, and all the pillars reactivate and he just spawns back. Just like that, we got the end again achievement. I think you know what happens next. Um, that wasn't supposed to happen. Dying is just such a huge inconvenience. At least all my stuff's still here, unlike the wither fight. Okay, let's try that again. Oh no. 
Okay, now that one is actually unfair. He just flew right into me. At least all my stuff was still here at the top. Perish. And then to my knowledge, another portal is supposed to open up. I quite literally triple checked this place and there was only one portal and it was the first one that opened. So I guess I just had to hope I still had some shulkers there. And there's one waiting at the doorstep. Nice. That one shulker wasn't going to cut it, so I had to find some more. And lucky enough, this big old tunnel had some. I just felt like y'all should witness that whole thing because that is actually kind of the most stressful thing ever. Now that's done, I have no use for the end dimension ever again. In the start of day 29, I somehow thought that rebuilding the beacon would fix the achievement, but obviously that was pretty dumb. I don't know what I was thinking. Since I had deemed that achievement impossible, I went for the last possible achievement, which was the supersonic achievement. It was obviously just a repeat from earlier. There was no results. It was completely pointless. I don't know why I tried to go for it again. And it gets pretty frustrating when you die just randomly like this. So I just went to sleep. On day 93, I had the bright idea of making this bigger and what i mean by that is i just made a wall with a bunch of holes in it so there's more chances to me to actually get the achievement i was really hoping this would work because i was running out of ideas really quickly i mean i don't know what i was really expecting but i have one more rocket so i might as well use it at this point i've almost given up i'm i'm just sitting here staring at my bed for a couple minutes i decided to farm some more gunpowder at night just because i'm gonna go for the achievement again i don't know what else to do finished the night out with 16 gunpowder and i was able to repair my elytra day 94 was the last day of me going for this achievement after all the trial and error after all the close calls after all the what ifs that didn't give it to us so i tried putting a speed beacon near us maybe that'll help how how explain to me how that was the best I could get. That's the best it's going to get. I then tried to dig a one by one tunnel and see if I could do it that way. Couldn't start flying in the tunnel. And I tried to jump in the tunnel and start flying and it just wouldn't work. I wasn't going to give up yet because I still had a couple of days, but I was really thinking about it. I think I had a pretty good idea, but I had to sleep on it. So I've been trying to do this achievement horizontally, but what if I tried it vertically? So I decided to make a little ring at the bottom of a pool, build all the way up about two stacks, and then make a little barrier around so I can dive down and hit the water. Oh, I hope this works. Pretty sure I stood up in my chair and started screaming when I did that. I wasn't done yet though. I still had two achievements that I think I could do. I put down a sketch for the beacon just to see how many blocks I was missing. And it was quite a few. The amount of blocks I needed had doubled from last time. But an achievement that I declared impossible before, I'm going to go for again. I decided to build a little chamber for the skeleton and then build 50 blocks out to be at the perfect spot to get the sniper duel achievement. So after taking quite some time to get this skeleton in its place, I ran all the way back, took aim, and got the achievement. And I normally sleep when it turns night, but I had no time to do that. These last four days, I would try my hardest to get the remaining amount of ore that I need to complete my beacon. I did about an hour and a half of mining. I was hitting world border after world border, and my pickaxe was so close to breaking. But after all that time, I thought that was enough, and I went back up to the surface. When I got up there, I immediately started smelting because it seemed like it was half of day 99, and I wasn't about to get stumped by time. When I had finished smelting all of my ores, I made it all the blocks and started placing it to see if that was enough. We had finally done it. 
the Beaconator achievement. And that marks the final achievement that was possible in this singular Minecraft Xbox 360 world. Except that wasn't the last one. There was still one more achievement we needed to get. Final achievement we needed to have was the passing time achievement, which is spend 100 days in Minecraft Xbox 360 edition. And obviously that would mark off the 100 days of us living in this world. And as I went to bed on day 99, I waited for that sweet, sweet passing time achievement. And of course, I just don't get it because that's the story of my life. I thought maybe it was because the time I spent in the nether or the end just didn't count as the overworld. I wasn't sure how it worked. And so I slept again and again and again, and I just never got it. And I'll be honest, I did this about 20 times and I was going to fake the end of this video, but it just never gave it to me. And I know I said I'd wanted to do this without any external help, but I decided to go to Google and it ended up saying you need to spend 33 hours. This means I would have to survive 100 day and night cycles in Minecraft. And with that, our 100 days comes to an abrupt end. Thank you guys for sticking to the end and tell me what you thought about it in the comments. Also, if you're interested in me coming back and completing all the achievements on the Xbox 360 edition, let me know in the comments as well. And if you enjoyed, hit that like button and subscribe for more videos from me. Thank you guys again and have a blessed day.